In this video, we are going to examine the first approach, the first method for solving quadratic inequalities, and that is by graphing them. So in order to solve a quadratic inequality by graphing, you're going to follow the, this process. You're going to complete the square. So you're going to transform it from standard form into our vertex form, our general form. So we are completing the square to get it into general form. And what we can do is we can use that general form to graph the vertex, to graph the axis of symmetry, to use the idea of finding two other points on the graph, and then graph the boundary. And so remember, the boundary is either going to be a solid line or a well, solid curve, this is inequality of the quadratic form, solid curve or a dashed curve. So we're going to, that's what it means by boundary. We're going to pick a test point to determine where we're going to shade. And so this is the process that is going to be used for graphing quadratic inequalities. So let's take a look at the first example. We're asked to graph y is less than or equal to x squared minus 6x plus 2. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to complete the square. So I'm going to get the quadratic and linear term isolated. I'm going to subtract 2. So y minus 2 is less than or equal to x squared minus 6x. The next thing I'm going to do is, now that I have the quadratic and linear term isolated, is I'm going to insert my placeholder. So I have y minus 2 plus my placeholder, x squared minus 6x plus my placeholder. I take half my b value, so negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. I squared, I get positive 9. And so positive 9 is going to go in both positions. And so I get y plus 7 is less than or equal to. I squared a negative 3. So x minus 3 in the parentheses squared. To get it in general form from here, what I'm going to have to do is subtract my 7. So y is less than or equal to x minus 3 squared minus 7. And so this is my general form. This is my vertex form. And so what we do from here is we graph. You know, remember, to find our vertex and everything, we need to identify our a, h, and k values. And so our a is 1. Our h is the opposite of what we see, so 3. And our k is negative 7. And so my vertex is the coordinate 3, negative 7. My axis of symmetry is going to be x equals 3. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph that. So 3, negative 7. So here's negative 6. So I'm just going to go down one more. I'll go off the graph, and I'll plot my 3, negative 7. There's my vertex. My axis of symmetry is x equals 3. So I'm going to do a dashed vertical line. There's my axis of symmetry. I can change it to assist us with distinguishing between them. So let's do green for that. Is there a min? Is there a max value for this? Is it a minimum or maximum for it? This is going to be a opening upwards because A is positive. So this is going to be a minimum. Your vertex is a minimum. The minimum value is negative 7, the y value of the vertex. So if I want to graph, you can use the idea of if you want left point right point that we've done in the previous videos. What I like to do is I like to do the least amount of work possible. I'm going to go back up to the original. And we always have to keep everything in mind. This is our standard form. We have standard form. We have general form. If you remember in standard form, your constant in standard form is your y-intercept. And so I can use that idea. I can go back down and I can plot my y-intercept at 2. That's given me a left point without actually having to do calculations. And this is 1, 2, 3 units away from the axis of symmetry. So go 1, 2, 3 units in the other direction. And then we're going to want to graph our parabola. 
And so we need to first figure out, are we going to use a solid or dashed line? Since it is y is less than or equal to, that means it is a solid curve that we are going to use. And so I'm going to graph the curve. So I have a solid curve going through my vertex and the two points I found. And now what we do is I'm going to pick a test point. We need to pick a point that is not on this line. And so if I take a look, 0, 0 is always, if you can, try and use 0, 0. 0, 0 is not on this curve. It's pretty close to it, but it's not on it. So I'm going to pick a test point. And I'm going to use the coordinate 0, 0. And you plug it in. I can plug it into the original of y is less than or equal to x squared minus 6x plus 2. The reason why I use the original is it's a lot easier to plug in. 0 for y and 0 for x. Simplify. 0 is less than or equal to 2. Is that a true or false statement? And that is true. Which means this value is in the solution space for this quadratic inequality. So what I'm going to do is I am going to curve, I'm going to shade in the entire region where that point exists, which is outside of the parabola. Now, what you need to be careful of, it is this whole region here. It is also, I mean, the graph does extend on forever underneath it, and it wraps around the other side as well. And so this is the solution space for the quadratic inequality. We solve by graphing. We graph it. We pick a test point. If it's true, that means that point is in the solution space. If it's false, it means it's not. And so you go the other direction. So let's try the next example. Graph the following for it. Let's switch back to a pen. x squared minus 6x minus 7. So we're going to first complete the square. So I'm going to add 7 to get my quadratic and linear term isolated. I'm then going to input my placeholders so I can complete the square and I can plug my values in. So x squared minus 6x plus my placeholder. Take half of negative 6, which is negative 2. I'm going to square that, which is 9. So I get a positive 9 here and a positive 9 here. And so I now am going to simplify. 7 plus 9 is 16, so y plus 16 is greater than. I squared a negative 3, so inside the parentheses I have x minus 3 squared. To solve for y to get it in general form, I would subtract 16. And so here is my general form I found by completing the square. And now we identify our a, our h, our k values in order to find our vertex and our axis of symmetry to graph. So a is 1. h is the opposite of what you see with your x. So it's positive 3. And k is negative 16. So my vertex is h, k. So my vertex is 3, negative 16. Your axis of symmetry is x equals 3. And so I'm going to put my vertical line, dash vertical line, through 3. There's my axis of symmetry. And now I'm going to have to graph. And so when I want to graph this one, we're going to have to go by different intervals on the y-axis than we are on the x-axis. So the x-axis, I went by ones. On the y-axis, I can go by, let's say I want to go to 16, there's six of them here, so let's go by threes on the y-axis. So this is really negative six, this is negative nine, this is negative 12, negative 15, and negative 18. You know, positive three, positive six, nine, positive 12, 15, and positive 18. And we went by ones on the axis. So we're now going to plot the point. 
3, negative 16. So here's negative 15. Negative 16 is a third of the way down. So here's my vertex. Again, I need to find two other points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go way back up to my standard form. And I'm going to grab my y-intercept. My constant is my y-intercept. And I'm going to use that point on my graph. You can do left point, right point if you want. But my y-intercept is a negative 7. So here's negative 6. So negative 7 is a third of the way down. It's 1, 2, 3 units away. So go 1, 2, 3 units in the other direction. And there's your right point. The graph is opening upwards. And so that means your vertex is a minimum. And the minimum value is the y value of the vertex, which is negative 16. We next need to figure out what we're going to do on graphing the curve. Since this y is greater than, that means you're going to use a dashed curve. And so I have my dashed curve. And I'm going to have to pick a test point in order to figure out where it's shade. And so if I take a look, a test point, 0, 0 is not on the curve. So I can use a test point of 0, 0. Again, I go up and I grab my original. My original says y squared must be greater than x squared minus 6x minus 7. And so I plug in 0. Is 0 greater than 0 squared minus 6 times 0 minus 7? What's nice about choosing 0, 0 is you can just ignore the first two terms because they always give you 0. So is 0 greater than negative 7? And that is true. And so since that is true, that means this point of 0, 0 is inside of my solution space. So then that is the region in relationship to the curve that I'm going to shade. So let's grab our highlighter. We are going to shade the entire inside part of the parabola. That is our solution space. And so if you were to, while I'm shading, we can talk about what we did. If you were to think back to our previous videos, we've completed the square when given a quadratic and standard form to get it in general form before, and we graphed. So this idea of graphing is not new to complete the square and get it in general form. The only new part is, you know, dash or solid curve and picking a test point to shade. And we've done that before with linear inequalities, which is now we're doing with quadratic inequalities. So this is the steps that are involved when it comes to solving a quadratic inequality by graphing. You want to make sure you complete the square to get it in general form. Use that information to find the vertex, graph it, and find the axis of symmetry. Graph the boundary either using a solid or dashed curve. Take a test point to determine where you're going to shade. That is the overall concept of how to graph a quadratic inequality to find the solutions.